Hello everyone. I am Shreyas. I am here with my friends Ram and Lokesh. Today we are here to discuss about nanofluids. Okay, Ram, tell me something about it. Yes, yeah, sure. Basically, these fluids are engineered colloidal suspension of nanoparticles in a base fluid. Nanoparticles are the particles in the dimension of order 10 to the power minus 9 meters. Usually, these particles are made up of metals, oxides, carbides, and carbon nanotubes. Well, what exactly are they used for? So they are used to enhance thermal conductivity and connected heat transfer coefficient of base fluids. Metallic nanoparticles are generally used to increase heat transfer rate of the base fluids. Yes, I get it. It's like combining properties of both the materials. As in solids, conduction occurs due to combination of vibrations of the molecules in a lattice and energy transport by free electrons. But solids can't flow. Whereas in liquids, conduction is due to the collisions and diffusion of the molecules during their random motion, which is not a great way to transfer heat, but liquids can flow. Exactly. And even nanoparticles also increase the surface area for heat transfer. Does someone know how to prepare nanoblades? No worries. Now we have Watson to help us with that. Watson. Yes, sure. There are two methods of preparing nanofluids. First, two-step method. This method utilizes nanoparticles which are initially in form of dry powder. Ultrasonic vibrators are generally used to stir nanopowders with base fluid. Agglomeration is a major issue in synthesizing nanofluids. Frequently use of an ultrasonic vibrator decrease particle agglomeration. However, the two-step method is recognized as a most economical process for producing nanofluids, as they are produced on large scale. It is suitable for producing oxide nanoparticles. The second method is the one-step process. The one-step process simultaneously makes and disperses the nanoparticles directly into the base fluid. This process is favorable because it prevents oxidation of nanoparticles. Drying, storage, transportation, and nanoparticles dispersion are avoided in this method to minimize nanoparticle agglomeration and increase fluid stability thus reducing the cost of production. Just to make it simple, agglomeration is the sticking of particles through one another or to the solid surfaces. Are there any classification of nanofluids? Yes, there are. Nanofluids are classified in four main categories, metal nanofluids, metallic oxide nanofluids, carbon mass nanofluids, and hybrid nanofluids. Nanofluids containing metallic nanoparticles such as copper, zinc, aluminum, etc. are the metallic nanofluids. Nanofluids containing oxides such as copper oxide, tin oxide, iron oxide, etc. are the metallic oxide nanofluids. Nanofluids containing carbon nanotubes are the carbon-based nanofluids and nanofluids and compass of composite nanoparticles are the hybrid nanofluids. Okay, now Watson, tell us few thermophysical properties of nanofluids. Here you go. The first property is viscosity. Viscosity in general is the internal resistance force for the fluid and hence it is an important parameter for all heat transfer applications. The viscosity of nanofluid is equally important as thermal conductivity in designing nanofluids for heat transfer applications since the increase of pressure drop that depends on viscosity increases pumping power. Furthermore, the convective heat transfer coefficient is also influenced by viscosity. Next, we have the particle size. The effect of particle size on nanofluids became a debate since contrary findings were published by researchers. For nanofluid of Al2O3 plus water and TiO2 plus water, larger the particle size, higher the viscosity. For nanofluid of Al2O3 plus ethylene glycol and CuO plus water, decrease in nanoparticle size increases nanofluid's viscosity. Next, we look at the effect of temperature on viscosity. The researchers are contradicting the viscosity of the nanofluids with respect to temperature too. Ethylene glycol or water-based CuO, Al2O3, and SiO2 demonstrate that viscosity decreases exponentially with rise in temperature. In contradiction to the above water-based carbon nanotubes, nanofluids showed an increasing trend in viscosity with respect to temperature. Well, now we know how viscosity and its attributes affect the nanofluids. 
Now tell us something about the thermal conductivity of nanofluids. The enhanced thermal conductivity of nanofluid is one of the important factors which affects convective heat transfer of nanofluid. Hence it is imperative to study the thermal conductivity of nanofluid to design a good heat exchange fluid. A few factors that affect the thermal conductivity are. First. Particle material. Example silver nanofluid has the highest thermal conductivity compared to other nanoparticles. Second. Particle shape. Investigation on thermal conductivity of SIC nanoparticles of spherical and cylindrical shapes was done. From the result, it is evident that cylindrical nanoparticles provide higher thermal conductivity than spherical particles. That's great. Hey Watson, tell us something recent trends in the field of nanofluids. There is widespread use of heat pipes, and personal computers frequently incorporate elaborate liquid cooling systems. Nanofluids represent an enhancement to the technologies that are increasingly being used for cooling electronics. While air cooling is the default, liquid cooling is necessary when high-power electronic devices dissipate more than of 300 to 520 watt per centimeter square. Much of the ongoing research is focused on immersion cooling and boiling. In tests, boiling with nanofluids has been shown to improve the value of critical heat flux by as much as 200% as a result of nanoparticle deposition on the surface of the component. Researchers are also continually testing new materials to disperse in different fluids. For instance, aluminum oxide, iron oxide, zinc oxide, cerium oxide, and bismuth oxide are just some of the options that Nanophase Technologies Corporation offers to customers. Other trends in the technology include the use of different materials such as copper, aluminium, and newly developed polymers for the loop of a liquid cooling system, or different wicking materials in the production of heat pipes and vapor chambers. In addition, improvements are being made in heat exchangers, pumps, and other components of liquid cooling systems. I've heard about a company named Hydronics, which I think works in this field. Can you tell us about that, Watson? Yes, I've heard about it too. It is an energy-saving solution company that manufactures this nanofluid called Hydro-MX. They claim it to be a revolutionary heat transfer nanofluid that provides significant energy savings in heating and cooling. The nanothermo technology of Hydro-MX increases the heat transfer rate. No matter what the energy source or how efficient the boiler or chiller is, Hydro-MX improves the efficiency of the whole system by transferring energy more effectively. It even provides benefits like corrosion protection, scaling protection, freezing and burst protection, and even protection against dangerous bacteria like Pseudomonas and Legionella without diminishing the system's efficiency. In cooling systems, when compared with water, Hydro-MX makes heat transfer 35% faster transferring the same amount of heat in a much shorter time. Hydro-MX reduces the total runtime of a heating system by transferring the energy much faster and more efficiently. In addition to this, the heat lost on flue gas temperature, 3 degrees centigrade, is also decreased by Hydro-MX usage. Hydro-MX is also one of the greenest projects of the world. The LCA and EPD, EPD 10329, certifications which are prepared by independent testing and approval organizations show that Hydro-MX decreases the CO2 emissions by 26.6% compared to water. That's really impressive. Today we have learned a lot about nanofluids, its uses, equation method, and various factors affecting its working and more. It's clearly a boon for applications such as industries and process heating, air conditioning and refrigeration system, heat pipes, solar energy, thermal storage system, electronic cooling system, and others. Saying this, we conclude today's discussion on nanofluids. Hope you gained some knowledge on this topic. Thank you for being here with us.